Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm happy to sew along with you the Phoenix bag by Chris W. Designs. Let me show you some of the amazing features of this bag. Now, one of the optional features were these side pockets here. I so recommend doing them. They were not hard to do at all and they just add such an amazing element to this bag. So they both undo like this and you would think they would go in this way, but they don't. They go in for the length of the side of the bag. So that's a perfect place to put your um, a small wallet or your masks or some keys or whatever. Your cell phone would fit in there as well, but there is a hidden cell phone pocket on the back here as well. I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, the big one. And look, it it's in there and it is hidden. <laughs> Um, so yes, you got those two side pockets. You have that um, hidden cell phone pocket. One of my favorite things about this bag is check out the decorative trim on here. I have never made a bag that has had that. And I tell you, it blows my mind how easy it was to get that. I walk you through that in the tutorial. We have lots of decorative trims on the side. It has purse feet. It has a reese assessed zipper. This one I put in my typical decorative uh, zipper pocket with overlay. I did not do a slip pocket on this one because there are already so many pockets, but it would be so easy to add one in if you wanted to. Yeah, this is a birth bag. It's birthed through the um, opening in the bottom of the bag and then that uh, opening is closed off through the zipper pocket. My typical way and preferred way of finishing a bag. Um, yeah, oh, the other thing I did differently was in the pattern, um, if for the crossbody strap option, she had it, so you use grommets here. As you all know, grommets are my kryptonite, so um, I decided to do these uh, straps, or these uh, connectors as well, and I walk you through how I do that um, in the tutorial as well. Anyways, um, what did I use in this bag? This fabric here, this is a fuzzy, I just love this. It's one of the fuzzy upholstery fabrics from Galaxy Customs. I did back these pieces, the upholstery pieces, with an EB Fuse Medium instead of EB Fuse Light, just to give it a little um, extra stand-up ability. <laughs> um, all my cotton pieces I have backed with EB Fuse Light, which is like an SF-101. Um, I do have a piece of Decaville Heavy in the bottom for extra stability. My main st stabilizer is the Pretty and pink sew foam from Galaxy Customs, which is similar to say an S, or not an S one hundred one, a Pelon Flex foam, or by Annie Soft and Stable. Um, that's it for interfacing, I believe. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, this black uh, vinyl is the uh, Loom black vinyl from Canuck vinyl from Galaxy Customs. All of my hardware is from Emmeline bags, except for my zipper and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala. <sighs> I think that's all that's in this bag. It actually goes together uh, pretty quick for such a complex looking bag. I loved making it. I think it's gonna be an amazing seller at my markets. I can't wait to make another one. This, having this panel here as a focal point just is so amazing for all of the fun um, fabrics that you can get out there where you could definitely showcase them in this bag. Anyways, how about we get to make it this bag? Alright, so you're going to need some rivets, number five zipper tape, four number five zipper pulls, a slider, nameplate, if you're doing hidden connectors like me, four rectangular rings, two swivel clasps, two D-rings if you're doing crossbody connectors, a zipper end, four purse feet, and optional six strap ends. Okay, so for pieces, you're going to need your lower main body, your base, which I have Decaville Heavy outside of the seam allowances, your lining pieces, main lining pieces, your lining gusset piece, four gusset side pocket lining pieces, your two interior zipper pocket lining pieces, 
two foam pocket pieces with fleece outside of the seam allowances. Your zipper panels to exterior and two lining pieces. Your gusset decorative straps, four pieces. Crossbody connectors, two of those. Two top facings with your exterior uh, vinyl. Two side gusset pieces mirrored to one another. Your handles. Crossbody strap. Four connector pieces if you're doing hidden connectors. Two upper body panel pieces and your foam. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do my cross body strap and my handles off camera. If you need a class on how to do that, that's down below in the description. Okay, so here's the base piece. We're going to go ahead and put in our purse feet. So I'm just going to use the pattern piece, punch out the holes uh, where the purse feet placement is. And on the wrong side of this piece, I'm going to mark as per the pattern where the purse feet are going to be installed. If you need a class on how to install purse feet, that is down below in the description. Okay, so that's done. I always like to put some duct tape over top of the prongs just to give a little extra security. Now I'm going to take my two main body pieces. Actually, I'm going to take one of those and one of the top panels. We're going to find the centers on the top and bottom of both of these. I just like to fold mine in half and do small snips. You can mark it with a pen if you prefer. I'm going to lay them out this way and the long side you're going to put right sides together with the top of the bottom panel. You're going to see where those little angled out parts are on that top panel. They should match up pretty perfectly with the sides of the main bottom panel. And we're going to go ahead and stitch across here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now what we want to do is we want to press that seam open because I'm using vinyl. I can't take that to the iron to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my double sided tape as my base to push those seams open. Please remember only use double sided tape if your machine can handle it um, where double sided tape can't be used. Uh, you can definitely use clips instead or finger press. Now we're going to go ahead and top stitch on both sides of that seam with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. One will be through the top panel and one will be through the bottom panel. So that is all done. Now we're going to take our bottom piece. We're going to find the centers of the long sides as well as the short sides. And then we're going to put it right sides together with this piece matching up our centers. And then go ahead and stitch across here with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
Next, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to press that seam towards the main body panel like so, and then we're going to stitch that seam in place through the main body panel an eighth of an inch away from that seam. Now we're going to do similar with the other panel, but we are not going to put the top panel on just yet. So we're going to find the top and bottom centers of our main bottom panel. And we're going to put it right sides together with the other side, other long side of our bottom piece. And we are going to stitch this on exactly like we did with the other side with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then push that seam towards the main body panel bottom panel and top stitch through the main bottom body panel. <laughs> the only difference here is we do not have the top panel on it. Once again, top stitch through the main bottom front panel, or back panel now, I guess it is. Now we're going to take this constructed piece, put it over top of foam, and use this as our template for cutting out our foam. Okay, so I have this already cut out and basted. What we want to do is on that side that we did not have that top panel on, we want to cut off approximately 3 eighths of an inch of the foam and baste around the other sides. So where the foam is hanging out loose here, you can go ahead and use some double-sided tape just at the top of the foam in between the layers to hold it nice and flat. This will get caught in top stitching later on. Okay, now we're going to take the next upper top panel and you're going to put it with foam as well using it as a template and along the bottom long straight edge you're going to do the same thing and cut away about three eighths of an inch of a seam allowance of the foam and then baste it along the other three sides. This is to help reduce bulk when we go to create that cell phone pocket. Okay, so now we're going to form our cell phone pocket. You're going to take one of the foam pocket pieces we have lined with fleece, find the top center, and what we want to do is lay it right sides together with the side of our uh, piece here that does not have the top panel on it. Nice and centered, matching up your center marks. Clip it in place, and then go ahead and stitch this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now you want to have that pressed away from the main panel like so. Now we are going to take our top panel here and we are going to measure in uh, as per the measurements on the pattern piece from each side. Find the center of the top and bottom. And now we're going to put this right sides together with that main panel piece, like so. Make sure that the phone pocket piece is hanging out out top up there. You don't want to be catching that in the seam too much. Just where our marks are, we'll catch just a little bit. So we're going to sew across here and backstitch, jump over here and over here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you don't want to sew in between those lines that we had drawn. If you do that, then you will be sewing your phone pocket shut, and we definitely don't want to do that. 
So when you're doing this, you should just be catching about three eighths of an inch or so of the phone pocket lining in that seam. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to use some double sided tape to once again, um, as my base, you can go ahead and finger press this or take it to the iron if you've used cottons. And we want to push the seam open once again. So that's going to be pulling our phone pocket lining piece down wrong sides together with the main body piece of our bag. I'm actually just going to use a pin kind of in between the layers um, just of the foam to hold that pocket in place. I did not, I made sure it didn't go through my exterior because I didn't want to punch holes in that. And then once again, we want to open up the other side of that seam. Push it nice and flat. And then through the, where my leopard print is here, so the top main panel, we are going to sew across there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a quarter of an inch seam allowance top stitch just through that top panel. So we are not top stitching through the top panel at all here, just through the main panel. And what this top stitching is doing is it is going to secure that one side of our pocket lining piece nice and flat against our main panel right or wrong sides together, holding it in place. Now we're going to take our other foam pocket piece, we're going to put some double sided tape along the top. Now we want to put this right sides together with the other piece, but that um, seam that we had pressed open, we want to line this up with the part of the seam that we pressed open towards the top panel. And then once that's done, we're going to go through the top panel with an eighth of an inch top stitch and then a quarter of an inch top stitch. And that is going to secure that part of the pocket lining um, in place without closing up that hole is really an amazing technique that she teaches us in this pattern on how to make this phone pocket. Okay, so you can see we have a working pocket here. Now what we want to do is close up the other three sides of our phone, our lining pieces of our phone pocket here. So we're going to kind of flip it up and out of the way of our uh, main panel, like so. And we're going to get as close as we can to that seam without sewing through that seam and sew up those three sides. Now there may be a little itty bitty hole um, if you don't get really close to the seams, but we are actually going to be finishing up um, on the exterior with some rivets that will be closing up that hole, those little holes if there are any. Because you definitely don't want to sew through the seam, you just want to get as close as you possibly can to the seam. So you can see that is done. Now what we want to do is from about three eighths of an inch or so away from the opening of our phone pocket, we're going to put a little dot in between our quarter of an inch and eighth of an inch stitching. And that is where we are going to add in a rivet on each side for added security as this pocket will be used over and over and we do not want those stitches to pop. I've backed my rivets with small scraps of Decaville Heavy just to uh, add a little more security. So I'm doing hidden connectors and crossbody connectors rather than metal connectors and grommets. And here is the sizes that I cut for my connectors. Two two by threes and four two by fives. So we are going to prepare these all the same way. I've drawn a center line down the middle 
using some double-sided tape to press the long edges into the center. And then we're going to take them to the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch down each of those folded edges with an eighth of an inch top stitch. I'm going to go ahead and chain stitch all six of these to save on cutting and thread. Once done that, cut all of these apart and we are just going to prepare our crossbody connectors. Again, this is just the way I'm doing them because grommets are my kryptonite. So um, what I've done is I've taken just small pieces of double-sided tape, put my D-rings on and folded my connectors wrong sides together over top of those D-rings. You can set those aside for now. Okay, so now we are going to mark where we are going to do our hidden connectors. Again, if you need a class on how to do hidden connectors, I do have that down in the description. So I'm going to find the center point of my connector as per the measurements in the pattern and then draw my one inch line nice and centered there. And that is where I'm going to cut my holes for my hidden connector. So again, if you need a class on that, that's down in the description below. Go ahead and install all four of your hidden connectors or your metal connectors. I've added in some rivets for added security and also added in my nameplate and backed my rivets with scraps of decoval heavy and my nameplate with a piece of duct tape on the back. Okay, now we are going to work on the fun gusset zippers. These are so much fun to do. So once again, I have basted these to foam, cut about three eighths of an inch seam allowance out of the foam around where the zipper will be to reduce bulk. We're going to take our four lining pocket pieces, gusset lining pocket pieces, along the long edges. We are going to put some double-sided tape. Again, you can use clips um, in place of the double-sided tape, or if you're on a domestic, try some Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. It uh, used to be great with my Juki 2010Q and did not gum up my needle too badly. Okay, so now we're going to take one of our zippers and we are going to stick it down. Both the lining piece and the zipper are right side up and we are going to stitch that in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I have put on my zipper foot here. It definitely helps when doing zippers to get your zippers nice and straight. I strongly recommend using your zipper foot whenever you can when doing zippers. Okay, so that's one side done. I've got my other lining piece here with tape on it and I'm going to do the same thing with the other unsewn side of my zipper tape. Once again, both pieces right side up. So now our two lining pieces are kind of right sides together. So across that other side and then press that open. Okay, so now what we're going to do is along one of our uh, gusset pieces here, we're going to put some double-sided tape just down and along that uh, cutout area where the zipper is going to go. And we're going to make sure our zipper pull is orientated, point, or closing upwards. Kind of a fold our linings right sides together like so. And once again, making sure your zipper is facing upwards and that seam that we had just sewn, we're going to go ahead and stick it right sides together with that exterior gusset piece. So again, make sure your zipper is closing up to the straight side, not to the curvy side. We're going to mark in on here about a quarter of an inch in from where our zipper um, kind of ends where that cutout is. And so along there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, you do not want to go past those marks because we need to flip this around. You may have to put your needle down and move your zipper pull out of the way. So I've gone ahead and I have done that with both of my uh, gussets. They're just mirrored to one another. 
Next, what we want to do is we kind of want to flip our zipper around or our pocket around like so you're going to see there's two raw edges of the vinyl on the short ends of the zipper tape that is okay we are going to be covering those with the decorative gusset straps later on so take your lining piece kind of pull it flap and hold it in place with clips kind of around like this that's just going to help keep that seam nice and flat because this is going to want to fight you a little bit to pull up and just along where the zipper is, we're going to go ahead and top stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and an eighth of an inch seam allowance right along that zipper. So our other lining piece is kind of up and out of the way and the one that's facing to the left or right is going to be held nice and tight with those clips holding it in place while you top stitch. So going in first with my eighth of an inch top stitch just along that zipper tape. And then going in with another uh, quarter of an inch top stitch and what that quarter of an inch top stitch is doing is it is just securing the foam that we had cut away. We are now sewing through that foam. But cutting that foam away has made it much less bulky right where this zipper is which is what we want to ensure that our zipper will open and close properly. Again you'll do the same with the other side the other gusset piece. Okay, so now you can go ahead and take those clips out. I'm just going to hold um, my lining pieces right sides together like so with a couple pins just to keep them out of the way. They will be longer than our gusset piece. That is okay because we will be trimming this up momentarily. Now what we need to do is prep our gus de decorative gusset straps. So just like our connectors, I have drawn the middle um, a middle line. I'm using some double-sided tape and folding the long edges into the center. We are not going to top stitch these just yet. We are just folding these raw edges into the center for all four pieces. Now this is where we are going to go and add that D-ring that I am adding in. So I've marked my top center and my bottom center of my gusset pieces, but we're working with the straight edge. I've measured in two and a quarter inches centered and drawn my one inch line. I'm going to take my D-ring with a little bit of double-sided tape to hold it in place and line my one inch D-ring up with that one inch line like so, so it's facing up. Then we're going to measure down, I believe it was one and three quarters of an inch. Double check your pattern piece to make sure I have the right measurement there. I can't remember 100%. I believe it was one and three quarters of an inch though. Take one of your gusset pieces, uh, get some double-sided tape outside of the seam allowances, and you are going to line it up, the top of that up with that line we just drawn. And what that is going to do is it's going to cover that raw edge where our zippers had met at the sides. And when we stitch this in place, it's also going to close up the sides of our zipper pockets. So I've measured up from the bottom and now we will put the uh, decorative strap on top of that line. So the bottom is along that line. Make sure it's nice and straight and then we'll go in and we're going to top stitch each of those folded lines with an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch top stitch on all four sides of each gusset piece. You will repeat with the other gusset side piece as well. So that's an eighth of an inch on one side and then the quarter of an inch next to it. And you will do that for all folded sides of those decorative gusset pieces. And this is closing in the short sides of our zipper pocket lining pieces. So I've gone ahead and that's all done and we can see the zippers work. My zipper pull moves. It's closed off these sides, which is great. Now what we want to do is go ahead and we want to trim off all of the excess of our, our decorative tabs as well as the lining and go ahead and um, baste those in place. Okay, so now it's time to put our main panels together. So we have already marked the bottom centers of our main panels 
as well as the short centers on our sides. We did that before. So you're going to match up the curvy bottom panel of our side with the center short side of the bottom piece and then bring just put a couple clips in there to hold it in place. Bring the gussets top and the main body top up and hold it with a couple clips. Same with the other side. And then once you have those secure, go ahead and clip all the way around, evenly distributing that fabric through. Use lots and lots of clips in the pattern. She recommends using staples along the curves. I myself don't have luck with staples. I hate pulling them out after, but I've heard it definitely works for some. You could also hand baste if you wanted to, if you're worried about that curve. I'm just going to hold it in place with my hands and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, so now we will take this to the machine and stitch it with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I already went ahead and practiced with one side before I show you how to do the other side. It was actually pretty easy. So the bag is going to kind of hide what I am doing, but I figured um, this kind of shows you how I move the bag under the needle as I go around that curve. So take it nice and slow, clip to clip. I've used a million and one clips as you can see. And as I get to that bottom corner, I'm just making sure my uh, pieces are all staying nice and even and working my way around. Once again, I still have my zipper foot on here because we are sewing the other side of the zipper here and we want to ensure that we're getting nice and close to the zipper teeth and because we are doing this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and the zipper foot always guarantees that we are going to have a nice straight zipper when used. So again, I 100% recommend changing out to your zipper foot uh, for this part. So once that's done, you can go ahead and clip around the curves with pinking shears and then go ahead and turn this right side out to admire your work. So look how pretty it is. My pockets work. She is gorgeous. That came together pretty easy, I missed them it. So now we're going to work on the lining. So I've already gone ahead and I've done my typical overlay zipper pocket. Make sure you leave the an opening in the bottom of your zipper pocket for turning. Now we're going to find the centers of our main pieces as well as our gusset pieces. We want to find the gusset piece top short side centers as well as the bottom center. Take your panel that has the zipper pocket on, match up the gusset center with the bottom center of this panel. And just like we did with the exterior of the bag, you're going to bring those ends up like so and clip. Do the same with the other side and then evenly distribute the fabric between all of those clips around those curves. Okay, and now we are going to go ahead and sew that with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, which we have done. We're going to do the exact same thing with the other lining piece, but we are going to leave a large opening in the bottom like so, and sew in between those lines there. So go ahead and do that with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that's the lining done. We have an opening in the bottom of the bag, which we need for turning, and an opening in the zipper pocket lining for closing up the bottom later on. Now we are going to work on these um, lining top trim panels. You want to find the center of both the top and bottoms of these long sides. Once that is done, put these right sides together and clip the short sides. And we're going to go ahead and sew these short sides together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance forming a loop. Okay. 
Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and you want to cut away some of the bulk just around that corner there where it has that slight slant, just a little bit. And then we want to press those seams open and then we are going to top stitch on either side of those seams with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides to hold those seams in place. Okay, so that is done. Now, this would have been easier if I turned the bag inside out, but my carpal tunnel is acting up really bad and I wanted to save on having to turn it around. So my way works as well. The main thing you want to do is take the long sides of your loop here and you want to match the center's right sides together with our main exterior. So once again, you could be doing this opposite what I'm doing. This is just going to save my wrists a little bit. So I'm taking the center marks of the long sides and matching them with the center marks of my main panel. I'm taking those seams that we just top stitched in place and matching them with the center marks of the top of our gussets. I'm just squishing the bag in like so, making sure the right sides together. Once again, make sure your top bands are um, positioned correctly. So you're using the wider side of the top bands to clip on. Now what we're going to do now is go ahead and we are going to sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If I was on my flatbed I would do that from the inside here but I'm going to take it to my cylinder arm and do it from the outside. Okay, now that's all done. You can go ahead and turn this up. Now what we want to make sure is that that seam that we just sewn is facing up. We are going to be using that seam as a guide to form this amazing top trim that I've never done on a bag before until now. So make sure it's all facing up. If you need to press it a little, go ahead and do that. Now we're going to prepare our zipper panels. I'm doing my zipper panels a little different because this is my preferred method. I'm measuring in three quarters of an inch from each of the short sides and I'm going to either press or use double sided tape to turn those short sides in. Those are our edges and that's just turning them in by about three eighths of an inch seam allowance on all four of my connector pieces. or not my connector pieces, my zipper panels. So make sure they're all the same height and they are. Now I'm gonna take my zipper. I'm not putting my zipper pull on at this point. You're gonna go ahead and pull down from one short end, turn it down at a 90 degree angle like so, and secure with a pin. Do the same with the other side, keeping it nice and even so they match. And then go ahead and baste these turns in place. Oh. 
There's Coco. She has to say hi at least once in a video. Once that is complete, you can trim up those tails so it's nice and even with our zipper tape. And now on the wrong side of our zipper tape from the opposite side than what we were just playing with, we want to take our ruler and draw a nice and straight one inch line on the wrong side again of our zipper tape. And this is going to help us put our zipper pull on nice and straight at the end. So once you have that, go ahead and pull your zipper teeth apart. Now we're going to take one of our lining zipper panels right side up and measure in 3 8 of an inch on the left hand side. I'm going to put some double sided tape down upon that. And then we're going to take our zipper tape uh, with it right side up and the curve to the left. So again our lining piece is going to be right side up and our zipper teeth are right side up. Line up that 90 degree curve with that 3 and an eighth inch march we 3 and an eighth inch mark we just made. Take your exterior piece, add some uh, double sided tape or clips remember and put this right sides together with that lining it up nice and even sandwiching that zipper tape. You will do the exact same thing with the other uh, two panels and the other zipper tape but you'll find that you'll be working with the 90 degree angle on the right hand side. Once those are in place go ahead and stitch these in place with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now what we want to do is press these panels really good wrong sides together. I'm going to use some clips to hold them in place. Finger press it really good. If you're using old cotton, you can definitely take this to an iron and give it a good hot press. And what we're going to do with this is along that bottom edge where the raw edges are, we are going to baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and the two short sides and along the zipper tape, we are going to go ahead and top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. You will do this with both panel pieces. Once that is done, we want to fold these zipper panels in half and along that raw edge side, clip, snip, do a small snip for our centers. And then put these right side up amongst each other. Make sure we're nice and even and that our zippers match up and those center marks match up, which they do. Now we're going to take our exterior piece. We're going to make sure when this is right sides together that the curve is closing to the left if and with our front side if you want it closing to the left. Along that top panel we have hanging out on top here, we're going to match up those centers and clip the zipper panel in place. I have never done a recessed zipper this way before. This is ingenious and again, it's going to give us such an amazing top trim. I'm so excited to show you guys this. Do the same with the other side except for now the 90 degree angle will be facing the right and we are on the back of the bag putting these right sides together with the main bag here or that top panel. And we're going to go ahead and baste that in place. So that's all done. Now keeping that zipper panel facing down, we are going to take our lining. I'm going to make sure my zipper is at the 
back because I like my zipper lining zipper pocket at the back. We are putting these right sides together, putting the exterior in the lining. In that opening in the bottom, just pull out just the very bottom of our um, main panel here. That'll help with turning later and less squishing of the bag. Match up our lining center with that zipper panel center where we have it basted on and clip in place. Make sure your zipper tails are tucked in. You don't want to be accidentally sewing through those. On the side, I'm doing it wrong here. Don't match it with that seam. That's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Find the center notch of our, there we go. I figured it out. Uh, the center notch of our gusset piece is lined up with the seam of where we attached our, um, we formed our loop for those top panels. Match up the center of the mains on the other side. And then go ahead and evenly distribute, distribute all of the fabric in between those clips. We are so close to being done. Okay, now that's all done. We're gonna take this to the machine. If I was on my flatbed, I would do it from the inside, but I'm gonna take it to my cylinder arm and stitch all the way around with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that that's done, make sure your stitching caught everywhere and go ahead and pull your bag through, through that opening in the bottom of the bag. Pretty easy one to turn, thank goodness. Double check that your seam all caught along there. And if it all looks good, go ahead and poke your lining or push your lining into the bag. Now for our top stitching, this is where it's a little different. So that remember that seam we had pointing up? We're gonna use that as a guide of where we are going to be forming that top trim. So use your sense of touch and feel that seam, make sure it's up and clip it in place. This is just such a pretty feature of this bag. Never have I done this before and it is just amazing. So go ahead and clip that in place all the way around. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to top stitch right along that seam. So with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, right along that, not the very top, but where the seam and the top of the panels meet.
go ahead and open up your zipper pocket, pull out your zipper pocket lining, reach in through that opening and grab the opening in the bottom of the lining, pull it through the pocket, clip the opening in the lining in place and we are going to stitch that closed with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance in between our stitching marks where we had started and stopped when we originally put the gusset into onto our lining pieces. Once that is done, go ahead and stuff the lining back through the zipper pocket. Make sure we caught everything and we did. And now all that's left is to sew shut that lining zipper pocket that we had left the opening. Make sure you're turning your raw edges in if you haven't already and go ahead and top stitch that shut with a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch seam allowance. show you why sorry for the weird angle why we drew those lines on the, the back of the zipper so I have my zipper pull in my handy dandy fork which is my zipper jig and those lines we drew when we put it through here we want those lines to line up if they don't line up like these aren't quite lined up my zipper is not going to go on straight so this just enables you to um, keep trying until you match up those lines without having to zip your zipper all the way up to see if it's straight or not you know it's going to be straight as soon as you get those lines to match up it took me about four or five tries to get it to line up but once i did you will see it's all lined up there and look how straight my zipper is it's perfection so then you can go ahead and trim up that tail and install your zipper end so I've put on my handles, I've put on my zipper end. Look how amazing this bag looks. I am so impressed with it. Thank you so much, Chris, for designing such an amazing pattern. And then we're done. All right, that's it. That's all. What'd you think of that? It's a pretty amazing sew. Thank you so much for Christine for allowing me to make th this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, yeah, if you did like this tutorial, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you want to support my channel further, you can definitely buy me a coffee. That's down below in the description how to do that. Or if you were interested in taking any of my online bag making classes, um, that is in the description below where you can join the membership site as well. Anyways, until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Bye!